Oh my heavens. Oh, and we're, we're live. We're live. Hi, we're here. <laughs> oh my goodness. I am uh, kittens. I am just, I am all over the place tonight. I decided to get, I decided to get in drag about a half an hour uh, later than I usually do because I wanted to charge my phone because usually after I do, um, after I do cat chat, I just immediately dive into content creation for TikTok because I'm a, because I'm, I'm that girl apparently. Because you're a social media whore. <laughs> you ain't whistling dick. Get those likes, and, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and to my, my, this side, to my this side, I am joined by the gorgeous, the, uh, the magnificent, the talented, the, ro I, I, I love calling you the rollerblade queen of the side. <laughs> I don't uh, even know the rollerblades. Yes. <laughs> I go legit, yeah. I am joined by the fabulous Anya Dick. Welcome to my show, honey. I'm very happy to have you. Well, hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I, uh, you know, everybody in digital age has been doing their digital thing, and um, I'm just so happy to talk to people again, even if it's not. Isn't it nice to be able to socialize? Oh my God, yes. And you know, I've done a couple of like outside gigs in the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Like um, you were talking about roller skates earlier. I did a roller skating holiday, no, roller skating cul-de-sac, birthday, baby shower, neighborhood block party. I was gonna say, is there a bar mitzvah in there somewhere? Probably, I kept the tip, of course. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm just so happy to talk to people and it's been rough, it's been a long time. And I yeah. think everybody's just been spinning their wheels and we're all ready to go. I, I one There was one show that I was at at the Slipper Room, and uh, the Slipper Room in NYC. And um, it was, I think, for some nerdy burlesque show. And I, I, I was friends with the photographer. And I love the cast so much, but they were, at a, they were at an intermission before a number was supposed to begin. And the wheel was spinning, but nothing was happening. So I quipped, the wheel is spinning, but the hamster is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like that's that's been the drag community on a whole yes. uh, since this whole thing started. Like, it yes, there are, a lifeless, yeah. desiccated husk just spinning at <laughs> light speed, trying to keep things moving. <laughs> oh my goodness! No, no I, was, I mean some of the girls here in DC they've been super popular, but they are workhorses and they are in drag three times a weekend. And you know what? My skin is just too old for that nonsense. Right? Isn't it yeah. awful? It's awful. I'm I'm amazed that I'm able to get in a drag once a week, let alone three times a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I but tried. Then, to of course. Get that. No, go ahead, please. I was gonna say I tried to get on that content creation grind, and I, you know what? I just don't have the heart for it's it. It's hard. Yeah, it's really, really hard. But you're young. You're only thirty. Forty-three. Forty-three. I'll take it. I though. was close. <laughs> yeah, well, it's that contouring. You can't tell. <laughs> it's, it's all that contouring. It's all that beautiful, beautiful contouring. So you have been doing drag now for a while. You've been doing drag for what six years? No, about two and a half years. I think the first time I did drag was actually like four years ago at this point. Um, this is the first time that me and Anya Dick are actually having a conversation. So I'm very unaware of her history. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we've just been trading uh, little uh, coy comments on Facebook for <laughs> <laughs> No, I got in drag the very first time. Um, Miss Adams Morgan is this big party that happens in DC right around Thanksgiving or yeah. Halloween every year. And a friend of mine said, oh, you should come, it's super fun. And I love to get dressed up and I thought I was an actor, you know, and I was ready to play this part. So I got myself some fake boobs and I got myself some hips and the whole shebang. And I ordered myself a box of makeup from Amazon. It, literally, if you search for box of makeup, you'll get pretty much the same thing I got. And it was all trash. But I thought, you know what? I'm smart. I know how to do makeup. Uh, and I tried it and realized, no, I did not know what I was doing. <laughs> no, it was, <laughs> I'll send you the picture sometime, it was horrifying. Please and thank you. If there's one thing I love and appreciate, and um, you'll have to forgive me, I, I, I do not know why I chose to wear this, um, this suede, this very vintage suede jacket. Um, and of course, you know, in my haste, I did not prime my face. So <gasps> I'm literally melting. Oh, that 30 minutes, was it worth it? That, that, well, I don't know. I don't know that was worth it or not. I, re I regret, I regret all my decisions that have led me to this. Lessons moment. learned, lessons learned. 
Um, so you've been doing drag now for about two and a half years. That's fabulous. And yes, I did Miss Adams Morgan. And it was so amazing that people who saw this other person, you know, they didn't look at me as my boy self. They looked at me as just this other magical thing. And you could say <laughs> anything you wanted and people would laugh at it. Like you anything. would pay good money to be insulted by a drag queen. Oh, for sure. And I'm like, wow, there's real power here. So I need to figure out how to make this whole thing work. Uh, and so it took me about a year and a half to figure out makeup. And then I started going out to the local bars, um, you know, dressed as myself and kind of building up the shtick and the character. And uh, so, yeah, I've been doing drag actually full time now for about a year and a half. Uh, but That's I've been doing good for you. Thank you. Uh, but I've been doing it for, I'll say, two and a half, maybe three years. Learned a lot. And it's, it's absolutely amazing. I've been doing drag now for about 10 plus years and you look 50% better than I do. 100%. You look 10 times better than I do. Honestly. I think you're gorgeous. I think that you have an aura about you that just transcends. That was exactly why you agreed to be on my show tonight. Uh, it's true. No, when you asked me, I was like, oh my God, yes. Hey, we can talk to each other. And honestly, you know, one of the things that I love about having drag queens on my show is that it gives me an opportunity to get into my own drag. Yeah. And uh, I tell you, it's fabulous. It's oh, and you play in the pretty dirt. Yeah, we just play off of each other. I love being in drag with other queens who are into it, like for the fun of it. Oh, yeah. Um, I see a lot of queens who are into it because it's work, you know, and I feel like it sucks the joy out real fast. It, but I, you know, I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up because I think with any, any creative medium, with any type of creative medium, there's always going to be that do I want to make this work? Do I want to make this fun? Do I want to make this a joy to do? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to really ask yourself that question before putting on the paint. And it's like, if you every are time. capable, say that again. Every time you have to ask yourself every time. Every time without fail, you have to ask yourself, oh, do I want to get into makeup? Is it is it worth it to get into makeup? Do I want to spend the hour and a half, two hours on getting into all this fantasy and then just. Take it off. I don't know. There's this song by, um, oh, I can't remember their names right now. It's a country song. I've been getting into country lately. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't tell. Called, Being pretty ain't pretty. And it's all about you do all this work, you go through all this pain, and then you just wipe it all off, you know? And uh, I love it. I think that I need to find a way to, I'll probably sing it at some point, but. Turn that into a mix, honey. Are you kidding Oh, me? yeah. No, there's so many great, like, diva songs out there that are all about drag, if you just think about it. <laughs> yes. Um, Jolene. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, Fancy is another great, great drag um, drag song. Um, but I mean, it's it's true. You know, we as creatives have to have to come up with this decision of whether we want to make the make the make the art work. Right. Um, and that's work. Just just getting yourself into the mindset to make. Maybe you're not having a great day and you need to get in, look like, a, you know, in my case, a clown woman and go make people laugh. <laughs> uh, and you have to, you know, you have to kind of have a certain something about you. And sometimes it's. Yeah. Hard. Hold on. I'm I'm also in the process of because, of course, like as soon as I start this, I usually share it. Um, and if you want to share this as well, by all means. Oh, but, yeah. um, how and this is this is a silly question. But how did you come to find the name on your dick? What, <laughs> what led you to the name on your dick? I literally, I have no idea. I one day after Miss Adams Morgan, I decided I'm really going to try drag. I'm really going to try it. I need to come up with a character because yes. to me, it's it's not like on your dick is somewhat me. Like it, she has to be somewhat me, but she's not. She's all my mom's friends from when I was growing up. <laughs> yes, and. and so I'm like, okay, what are all the mannerisms and what, it, how does, for a while I tried to get her to talk like she was from Minnesota, you know? Oh my gosh, everybody laughs at it, but it's a lot of freaking work. It is a lot just of work. Staying in that all the time. So I kind of go in and out of it. Anya Dick just. I mean, it's. Say, say that again, dear. I'm sorry. Just popped, Anya Dick just popped into my head and I've never once questioned it. Don't. No, I know. As, you, it, as soon as you start to question it, that's when you know that it's not your name. Oh no, it's definitely my name. I think sometimes I think of myself as Anya. Um, like, what would Anya do? Oh, let me let me think of Anya, and 
It's Isn't that fabulous. It. As my job, I love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm very happy to hear that. Also, congratulations. I heard you just moved. Um, you moved to the burbs of the no. No, no, no. I lived in the burbs of DC. You lived in the burbs of DC. Now I live you way liberated out. liberated yourself. <laughs> I liberated myself. It's true because when COVID happened, um, I was lucky enough, you know, I could work from home mostly and try the digital thing. And my husband yes. was very really lucky to work from home. So we really isolated ourselves for a good seven or eight months. And of course, it was summertime at the beginning of COVID, you know, spring and summer. And we sat on our front porch every day for six months at happy hour looked at the same 22 houses we could see from the front and we're like we need some space mm -hmm. so we decided to move out to the middle of nowhere in farm country and i love it <laughs> thus the aesthetic that you're rocking yes <laughs> well i know it's born with this deep voice so i sing a lot of country music <laughs> now i have to ask are you a trained singer are you a trained actor uh, I am not a trained actor, no. I actually, when I was a teenager, I was a world competitive figure skater. And okay. so, yeah, I got really good at understanding how to perform well. And mm -hmm. I, I just took a lot of those skills of like self refinement and perfection and working through a program or working through a song um, and kind of gave myself those abilities as far as acting yeah. goes. And I'm sure that I could do with some acting classes. But singing, I have been taking lessons for many years, uh, seven years at this point, off and on. I sing every single day. Um, I'm definitely hampered because I want to sing like Bruno Mars, you know, like I want that gorgeous angelic voice. But I sound like this, baby. So I mean, there's doing? nothing wrong with sounding like a baritone. No, I just um, had to adapt it and learn to use it. And, you know, that's that's one of the things that I love so much about drag is that there really is no wrong way to do it. As long as you're not offending anybody, you're right. doing the right thing. Yeah, totally. And, and if people are enjoying it, then give them more. Exactly. If people are enjoying it, then give them what they want. Continue to right. play to the audience. I love it, too. It's, it's a never-ending list of little things to learn how to do better. I love that. And there it is. That is that is yeah. advice you can take home with you. Um, yeah, be better than last time every time. Yep. Yeah. I could. I truly could not agree more. I don't know how much more I can perfect upon V. Arthur, but I'll try. <laughs> well, now you got to do like, what if B. Arthur was like a French immigrant with scurvy? Or I don't know, like something crazy. <laughs> what happens? <clears throat> oh my heavens! Go on and see what happens. Who knows? <laughs> Reach into my golden, my golden girl's bag of tricks and see what happens. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, you've been doing drag now for about two and a half, three years. How did you find your look? Who were your? I I've asked other queens this, but who were your inspirations in terms of in terms of drag? Oh, well, my biggest inspiration in terms of drag are Coco Peru. Of course. Um, yes, I just, for some reason, Coco Peru, that movie trick, I saw her for the first time and I've watched everything she's ever done. Um, something about just that, you know, that kind of cranky old lady. Yeah. Um, yeah something there. Like yeah. Dolly Parton, of course, because everybody loves Dolly and she everybody just has a personality that just makes you want to squeeze her, you know? Uh, George Carlin is very heavily in part of my influence really? as well. That's fabulous. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because um, I think people are fucking stupid and they need to be shown that they're stupid. <laughs> but if you get them to laugh at themselves, then they're better the next time. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, as far as look goes, honestly, I think it was just trial and error until okay. I looked as good as I wanted to look. I draw <laughs> a smile on my face so I don't actually have to smile at you all the time and yeah that's I've a nice done. feeling yeah, because I, I i have not perfected that yet because every time someone looks at me they always are you okay <laughs> they're fine why what's the matter you just you look like you're unhappy i'm like oh that's just resting bitch face <laughs> that's I apologize a time them. of turmoil <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's fabulous i've never heard Somebody used George Carlin oh, as an inspiration God. for their drug. Because I adore, I have, 
Mm-hmm. I, I cannot tell you the amount of the amount of times I've gone on long treks with my family. This was years ago. Long treks to either Staten Island or Jersey, and I've had just to listen to something. And I would listen to George Carlin, and I would be hysterical laughing. We had a way of just pointing stupidity in the human mammal, right? And yes. everybody, everybody associated with everything he said because they've all we've all done it before. We've all, all of been us. there, all of us. But he had a way to get you to laugh at it, which yes. I think is very educational. Um, I think that getting people to recognize how silly they are uh, and they sort of get to a point where, wait a second, is that good silly or is that kind of like loser silly, you know, or bad silly? (laughs) And they have to make a choice. And if you get them to laugh at themselves, they have to make that choice every time. So I think it's, yeah, George Carlin was a big one. Um, Hedwig was another one. I saw Hedwig. Yeah, when Neil Patrick Harris did the big tour and on Broadway, mm-hmm. I saw that, and I'd never seen the show before. Um, oh, so the big one, beautiful, beautiful, very entertaining and very um, tragically beautiful story. Yeah, it really is, and the music is fantastic, and just the concept of the show is great. Um, so I saw myself doing that at some point because I was singing at that point, and I was, you know, working on acting and working on character stuff. Yeah. And I saw myself doing that at some point. So I'm somewhere along the way. Hopefully, I'll be, I'll get there soon. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I could, if I could make any type of suggestion, it's all networking. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah well, and, the, the industry, the business, it's all in who you know and who you do blow with. Yeah. Um, COVID was rough because my had really just sort of launched on you. The yeah. year before in like September, October. There were um, a lot of drag queens that like started started doing their thing in like 2019. And then like 2020 happened and it just fucked everything oh, up for everybody. Everything crashed. We had weekly sold out shows. We had like theaters that were sold out. Um, I was working with a couple of musicians to put together like a, a little Hedwig style show, you know, like a one woman band mm-hmm. kind of show. Yeah. Um, and then COVID hit and everything just stopped. And I was, at first I was a little bit relieved because it was getting to be a lot really quick and I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> but then- Do any of us, do any of us really know? No, what we're doing I hope not, today? I hope not. I feel like once I know what I'm doing, I'm not gonna like it anymore. That's kind of how my life has gone. <laughs> oh, stop Once it. I really know what I'm doing, it's time to move on. <laughs> So oh. yeah, uh, I drag to me is uh, also I've always had this little girl inside me. You know, everybody does. Like I've had this little bit of fabulous. I've wanted to, like make a fool of myself. What I really love about drag is the way that I paint. If you saw me in person, you wouldn't recognize me. And I can go to the grocery store, and none of these middle-aged bitches from my shows are gonna know it's me, and they'll smile at me, and I'll just walk along. I love it. <laughs> And it's that's like, all yeah. there is to it. Yeah. That's, all there is, that's all there is to it. I can promise you, if I... It, the My distinguishing feature is I'm tall. Oh, yeah. People know me because I'm tall. That's The, the buck stops there. If ever I'm someplace, it's like, just look for the tall guy. The, the, <laughs> tall, the tall gay guy. The tall gay one. The, the, well, I'm pretty guy. tall, too. I'm six foot two, and I weigh 220 pounds, so Anya's a big girl. Oh, honey, you're only 220. Get on my level. <laughs> some more. Well, I mean, compared to some of the Ariana Grande there, I'm big. <laughs> no, you <laughs> no, you are you are just magnificent. I, I adore your I adore your personality. Thank and you. when uh, this is this is off topic, but I'm curious because I'm I'm Curious cat, it's just part of my nature. How long have you and your husband been together? Oh, okay. We've been together for we're going on 23 years. It's been a long time. No, 22 years. 22 years. I'm that's magical. Oh, that's thank absolutely you. magical. When did you both get married? We got married in 2015. It had become legal. Okay. It a, just became legal at that yeah, point. About a year before that. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't a matter of we were gonna wait to do it. I just don't think it even really crossed our minds until it was actually possible. Gotcha. And um, I proposed to him. We had a big New Year's party. We were for a time in our little town in the suburbs. Yes. Our gays. We had all the parties. Um, you know, we had everybody come over. We'd have big 
parties and have catering and all that crazy kind of stuff. And so we had a big party and I proposed to him that night. And oh, you know, everybody cried. It was so sweet. Of course. Of course. And then we had a great big wedding and then we stopped throwing parties because I was over it. <laughs> man. You had reached a point where you had said, I'm done, I've had enough. Oh, absolutely, yeah. No, I got the man, I'd had all the fun. It was time to move on to something else. So here I am. <laughs> and now here you are doing drag and living the high yeah. life. <laughs> so I have a question for you, since we're talking about like the genesis of our drag. Do you think that Tomcat came around um, and Tomcat is who Tomcat is because of B. Arthur? Or did you already have that and it led you toward drag? Um, B. Arthur was not the catalyst for my drag. Um, I, I, re I regale that um, to Ursula. Ah. I, I, owe, <laughs> I owe my drag to Disney Villains. <laughs> um, and well, that's a know, good it's, 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 the damnedest, it, it's the damnedest thing, really. And it's that's such a great question to ask me. I <laughs> just put me on the spot. When when I started doing drag, I impersonated Disney villains, and my my drag sort of manifested from female impersonation. And uh, you know, in I think it was like 2015, I got the brain dead idea to to put B. Arthur in a Deadpool costume. And it just it blew that. up. And I'm I like, saw that picture. <laughs> I'm like, who, who am I? What is this? But even before that, I think it was like in my graduating year of high school, I, yeah. I wrote a script for my drama and acting class called The Bronze Boys. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm saying this. I created The Bronze Boys and it was literally just a gender flipped script of the Golden Girls. The only one I did not change was Sophia. I kept Sophia. She's time. Oh, she, you can't. You can't. Yeah. You can't make. You can't make Sophia a man. It just. It doesn't work with the dialogue. And um, it made sense that it, it made sense for an eighty-year-old woman to live with her some odd year old son because you sure. know mama's boy complexes and so on. Sure. And from that moment, hey. people, uh, people in my graduating class they they delineated me between the Grinch and V. Arthur, and I'm like, okay, I'll I'll take that. I'll take that and run with it. I don't care. <laughs> So uh, I I did I did be Arthur the first time in like 2014 2015, and people just really gravitated towards it, and I'm like I I think I I think I might have something here, and it, you know from there I just I started watching I'd always loved the Golden Girls I'd always been a big yeah. a big Golden my mom girl. and I watched them religiously of of course we can talk about Elliot's abysmal turn with Rue McClanahan at some point during the broadcast, but that's entirely up to you. Um, so I, uh, whatchamacallit, I, I did it. And then I just, every time, one of my girlfriends mentioned to me a few years before I even thought of putting on the B. Arthur drag. And she goes, Tom, I watch Maud and all I see is you. Like there are times when Maud will like make a face and I'm like, that's Tom. And I'm like, no, that's, that doesn't exist. That's <laughs> not real. And then well, I start watching Maud myself and I'm like, yeah. Oh no. Oh Maybe no. Maybe deep down inside, you knew it. All she's, always, she's always been there, I guess. She's then, always with us. <laughs> in, in 2009, when she passed, I was like, oh, she was old. She probably had cancer or something. It wasn't that big a deal to me. And then, of course, like years down the line, like I end up being a very notable B. Arthur impersonator. So it's just like, I want to meet her, but at the same time, I kind of don't. You know, yeah. I'm always of the mind that you don't want to meet your heroes. Yeah. You well, don't I mean, meet your heroes. it's a saying for a reason, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think the only hero that I would want to meet is Dolly Parton. Oh, for sure. Well, I mean, how can you not? Oh how can you God. not love? I just want to love her so much. Yeah, <laughs> she's so cute and lovely. She's literally, literally just a salt of the earth human being, mm -hmm. and just mar she's marvelous. She's absolutely, yeah. absolutely marvelous. And she's another one who has a way of putting somebody in their place without being threatening about it, you know. And exactly. she has always had the same outlook and the same disposition, and she's always been Dolly. So you know it's yeah. true. Like, you know, that's actually her. There's oh. no, I don't think there's ever been a point in time when I've said she was phony. 
The only thing right. I think Sony about Dolly Parton is her chest. Yeah, well, <laughs> same. And that was that was my choice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I I can I, I I commend her. I completely and totally commend her for who she is as a person. And I am just so thankful that more more younger queens are beginning to figure out who she is. Yeah, yeah. I think definitely that more nostalgic version of like early gay awakening. You know, I think <laughs> yeah. we come back in our culture. We're kind of revisiting where things came from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So. Now I have to, I don't, I don't believe I asked this. And if I did, I apologize. But what led you to get into drag? What was the draw for you? Well, it started with, oh, I didn't finish my Miss Adams Morgan story. All right. So I called all my friends up and said, hey, I found someone who will do makeup with us for us because I was terrible at it. And uh, <laughs> they literally said, what are you talking about? We're not going in drag. We're just going in costumes. And I'm like, God darn it. I bought the boobs and everything. So I got myself all up in drags. I had a fantastic night. Um, it was so much fun. I just had to do it again. Yeah. And I knew to get there that I had a long way to go. So I started working on like all the little pieces and it really made me appreciate how much, how fabulous good drag is, you know? Like just, oh, you have to be talented and you have to be smart and you have to be physical. And oh, I love it. So- there's a lot of people don't realize just how many pieces go into oh, go yeah. into good drag. Yeah. Even lukewarm drag, it takes a lot to get into it. Yeah. Oh, and just to get into it after you've spent hours gluing rhinestones and you know, teasing wigs and all of that stuff, you still have to get into it and get yourself back into that mindset to still be funny. It's yeah. I don't know. It's the hardest work. At, and this is true, I've never really been a laborer, so it's the hardest work I've ever done. <laughs> I get done with the gig and I'm just, ugh, my legs hurt, my hips just hurt. Just rip the I... wig off, call it a day, just get the spanks, get the, get everything off, just get just, everything off of me. Right, I flop, I literally like get out of the shower, flop down face first in the bed, and do not bother me until morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I do have to ask, when you perform, do you lip sync? Do you do stand up? Do you, or, I, or are I you do. just a jack of all trades? Uh, I do lip sync on very rare occasions. I figure yeah. I've put this much work into being a singer. Um, and you can put so much, you can twist a song so much by the way you perform it. Um, like just the way you form, you know, this form the words and phrasing and all of those things. So I really love to sing. And I am limited somewhat, but I found ways to find songs that you just would not expect a drag queen to sing uh, and make them fun. Like the Richard Cheese version of Baby Got Back. Or, you know, like there's ways to take things people know and make them fun. So I one of my favorite things to do, and this is something that I've been doing for a while now, is I will look up uh, Disney princess songs and I will, I will look for the male versions of it. When I say the male version, I don't mean a cover of it. I yes. mean someone who took the original song and then uh, edited it, manipulated it with either Audacity or Adobe Audition or yeah. something to bring the pitch down lower. And every time I like try to find a new one, I'm like, ooh, let me see if I can sing this song. And then I sing it and I'm like, oh, that's great. I'm an owl. I, 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 I'm, I'm a fake soprano. I'm, yeah. I'm so honored. I don't deserve this goodness. <laughs> no, I, it's it's a lot of work. And finding the right tracks, as you know, or finding musicians who want to record it with you is tough. Um, getting yes. everything on the same page is tough. But I've I've uh, I have as far as Disney princesses go, I have a fun one that I've recently done at some shows. You take, uh, you know, the song "Kiss the Girl." Yes. Yeah. Well, I have the voice to sing that. Sha la 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 my. <laughs> so I'm singing this song. Um, looking like this, which people never expect. And so I'm singing the song, but in the middle of it, and you know, sort of the, like the breakdown section or the instrumental section, I talked about the meaning behind this song. And it is a 15 year old disabled girl in a boat alone with a man twice her age in a swamp who's hearing voices telling him to sexually assault her because she can't say no. That's brilliant. Yeah. That and then if you sing the rest of the song from that point of view, people can't stand it. Their minds are blown. But it's true. 
It's, it's totally true. true. Oh, Disney is and they sure. laugh. I'm sure the audience cackles when you oh, say that. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I love it. It's I try to sing every time if I can. Sometimes the sound in the venue is terrible, so I'll lip sync. You know, feedback and stuff. You need to be careful about acoustics because they can they can yeah. make a break. And I'm just really getting at the point where I don't need to hear myself to do a good performance. You know, like yep. that practice. Uh, and I always do stand up. If I'm hosting, you'll get at least ten minutes of stand up out of me uh, every show. Great. Yeah. And improv with the audience, you know, all the kind oh, of stuff. Yeah, she do have and, to work with the audience. Yeah. No, my shows, I'm working on a one-woman show, though, mm -hmm. uh, with a musician friend of mine, kind of Hedwig-ish, get up, tell stories, sing some songs. It's called Come and Get Some Anya. Um, hopefully, it will be released at the end of the summer. We'll see. So keep okay. going. Yeah. I'm excited for that. That's exciting. This sounds wonderful, Anya. I'm very excited for you. Thank you. Yeah, my husband thinks I'm crazy. Um, well, but I mean, does he support you? He does. When the whole thing started, matters. it doesn't matter, no. When the whole thing started, he was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Are you, do you have, like, do you have questions? Do we need to talk about things? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, I see why you're, oh, I see. Okay. I see your concern. Well, and, no, oh, oh, wait, no, you have me curious now because I, I'm familiar with a lot of people who start, who are starting to identify as cross-dressers and has, has your husband been asking you those types of questions? Well, this was a few years ago, but that, I think that was kind of along the lines of where he was coming from. Okay. Um, the transgender issues had really bubbled up to the top around that time, you know, and he was he was trying to understand how people could be trans. And so we'd had a conversation about, well, think of it about being gay. You don't question it. You were never once straight and chose to be gay. You just are that, way. Are that way. And if you just feel like you're a woman, but you're in a man's body, then you're a woman, you know? Mm -hmm. Like if you got transferred into a robot, you'd still be a woman kind of thing. Um, and he's like, okay, okay. So we'd had that conversation. And then literally probably a few weeks later, I started putting on makeup and wigs and stuff. <laughs> He's like, okay, do we have to talk? I'm like, listen, I, I fully respect that you asked that question and that you're concerned, uh, but this is costume. Because it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's a very valid question to ask. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, lots of people. But I mean, it, in the context of a relationship, not so much in terms of who that person is as an individual. It boils down to the two of you having that that mutual discussion of, listen, right. is there anything that I can potentially do for you? Is there anything that I can that I can support you more with? Do yeah. we need to like have a psychiatrist involved? Like these are real conversations that a lot of people have had with their significant others. I'm sure, and I mean, I had to be I had to be aware of him as well because it's not something he'd ever even considered because I no. I've never been interest I've never what's the word I'm trying to use I've never given those you've never given in I, you've never questioned, never questioned your own gender. gender you've never questioned right. I am cisgendered I know I'm a man um, I dress like this for effect um, but I, that's where I come from it which is different than some people some people get to drag Very out true. some course. people use drag as an outlet yeah um, and we we are very um I, I, we can only speak from a uh, how do I say this? Because I, while I identify as non-binary and right. while I present very, very cisgendered, I do still use they, them pronouns. And, you know, having this conversation with people usually just leaves them like, but you're a man still. And I'm like, mm, not really. There's, there, there's layers there. And it's one of the reasons why it's been proven that gender is a spectrum. It's not, it's not black and white. Right. Yeah. And people well, have a very people have a very difficult time trying to understand that. Yeah. Well, and I say I have some trans friends who are having a really hard time with their families and just with people in general. Because uh, especially because of the times that we're living in right now with what's going on in Tennessee and Alabama and Mississippi and Missouri. Yeah. And Arkansas. Yeah. 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 And um, all I can say is I know that you're frustrated. I know that you just want people to understand, but you have to realize people haven't been thinking about it their whole lives the way that you have. Exactly. It's new to them and they also need time to understand. Yep. Um, and unfortunately, emotions tend to get locked into the middle of that. And 
it ends up turning into a disaster more often than it should, I think. Um, it's because people choose. This is the part that's the choice. People choose not to understand other people. Yes. And it's, it's, caused, it it's caused irreparable harm to a lot of people. And, you know, it just, it reaches a point where you have to say, we need to take a step back from this conversation because you are right. feeling one way and I am understanding another. So before either of us jump down each other's throats with information, let's regroup, maybe do, maybe have mad passionate sex, <laughs> may, and then and then we can figure it out after. You gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you literally, you do what you have to do. And, you know, it's, it's good that more people are having these conversations. It's unfortunate that there are a lot of people out there that will choose not to listen to those conversations. Yeah. It's like any other topic of change. You know, uh, people are inherently, we're apes, we're primates, and we are genetically programmed Roll 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 fearful of things that we don't understand. Exactly. And it's our choice to continue to not understand them. And that's where the real conflict is. Yes. And Unfortunately, there's too many people who've been able to go their whole lives without having to understand someone else and look at their point of view. Mm -hmm. And we're just fighting that apathy, that, you know, that social ennui that I think is part of having so many people. Yeah. It's the more time progresses. And of course, you know, there's always that that's that's one side of the coin. One side of the coin is taking the time to understand and taking the time to regroup and, and just understand. And then there's the other side of the coin where people will just hate to hate. And people say, oh, well, it's not, it, was, it, was in, it wasn't in the Bible. It's, it's no, it was, it's wrong. And then it just, it, it, becomes, it becomes too much to handle. And, you know, having conversations with people who will just outright hate to hate, you, there's only so much drilling into the soil you can do until you're like, there's no oil here. Absolutely. And, you know, they say, don't beat a dead horse. And yeah, yeah. And there's, you can't change people who refuse to change. You can't change people who don't understand what's that. There's a problem. You know, yeah. if they didn't see anything wrong, why would they change? Unfortunately, but because because there are people out there that feel again, it all it always boils down to how a person feels. Uh -huh. It never boils down to how a person logistically understands something. And you know, there's there's such a lack of um, listening to science where it's like you know, so many people years ago, oh, Bill Nye, we love you, we love you, Bill Nye, and then Bill Nye says, well, gender is a spectrum, it's scientifically proven. Well, we don't mean that, Bill Nye. We don't want to listen to that, Bill Nye. Yeah. Like, really, yeah. That is that where we're at right now? Science is a tough one because it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and more yeah. complicated, and there's more things you don't know. And, people and like, you know, like I said, people are afraid of what they don't know, so. I can't tell you. My family is 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 my family is not getting vaccinated. And I can say this here and now as an individual, I will get vaccinated, but I will get vaccinated by my doctor's office. Right. I don't I don't want to get vaccinated by a CVS and especially like especially now that I'm not working and I'm just in this sort of bubble, there's there's nothing outside of this this room that I've created for myself that would lead me to getting vaccinated if that time changes of course i will go and get myself vaccinated because that's the human thing to do it's yeah. the human thing to do and you know there are just so many people out there that will choose not to not to listen and my question is why why are well, you they they think that they have listened but the yeah. side that they chose to listen to is the it's wrong lead it's with their emotions wrong. have faith side have faith in the thing i say side don't listen to the people who are telling you that it's more complicated, it's more expensive, it's more whatever. Here's the easy way to go with that. And I know that that's condescending, I guess, but um, not at all. Not a place. Truth to it. I've, I've heard, I've heard far worse. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got a lot worse in my head, but I'm being nice. 
That's what that's what everyone does. They all try to be nice, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I've, heard it before. I've heard worse. It's fine. But I mean, you know, that's that's where we're at right now as a people, where people are just choosing not to listen and not understand because they're so focused on on themselves. That there's, you know, there's such a lack of empathy and there's such a lack of sympathy within people. Can I ask you a question on that? Oh, go ahead. When is there a time that it wasn't like that? True. Yeah, I I think a lot of this boils down yeah. to just human nature, and once we can, once we can accept that that's the way people are, we can work within those parameters to make it yes. better. And that's what I've tried to do with Anya is find a way to work in those parameters yes. and you know, stretch everybody out a little bit until I can. Which get you it. do beautifully, from what I understand. Your shows are magnificent. Oh, thank you. I love them. I, they're they're not the flip around, flip your hair, do splits, that kind of thing. But I think people are. I do not know the years that someone would have to study dance to figure all that shit out. <laughs> it does. I I I commend them. They yeah. are a beautiful breed of people. Yes. But that is not exclusively what is in drag. Right. And I'm not that person. So I'm something else. And yes. I think that that's one of the reasons that I took off so quickly is, number one, I worked in technology and I was a professional in an office for 20 years. So I know how to get, I know how to organize things. I know how to manage projects. Yes. I know how to get shit done. Um, and I have a ton of technical skills for video editing and photoshopping, mm -hmm. all of that stuff, which I can rely on. I may hit you up for some of that stuff sometime because I, <laughs> I'm only so so. <laughs> I'm here. I'm um, great with a sewing machine, but technology just seems to be a problem for me. Oh, really? Because I think of sewing. I've recently just learned how to sew too. Um, Is it and not? I, I love it. I love sewing. Oh, do you? Oh, okay. I, I do. I, I, I have all the. Afterward. It was it was hard at first, and then it's just you know you're figuring out how to cut the fabric into pieces and then put the puzzle together. Yeah, once you figure out how to shape something around your body shape, then you can fit the pieces together. Yep. Yeah. But uh, hey, tell me more about the technology side of you. I'm interested. Oh, okay. Well, so I worked in mostly nonprofit education tech for 20 mm -hmm. years. I went into the private sector for a couple of years, and it was awful. Um, I've worked for some really big nonprofits. I worked for National Geographic for four years uh, in their education. We were writing she's science. Legit. She's legit in this house. Ooh. <laughs> uh, and in the last five years of my career, I worked in for PBS Kids in behavioral analytics and adaptive learning. And we were doing peer-reviewed clinical research on the way children interpret their digital selves. So in games and whether they understand how yeah. to whether their brains can incorporate the knowledge that they gain and what, how young they are before that mm -hmm. doesn't work. So we did a lot of, I did so much studying in those five years about how people are and why we do what we do and how I can build a game to kind of watch for that behavior and then take it and do something with it. Yes. And um, along the way, it freaked me the hell out. I was watching the election happen in 2015 and 2016. I was watching people just literally fall for the most blatant propaganda and be total dicks when I'm like, uh, you want to check whether this is real or not. You know, this might not all be real. You might be getting taken for a ride. Oh, screw you, you arrogant. You know, it, it was awful. Um, Anya came somewhat from that because you can say those things to people and they laugh. And they lie. And they like it because look at me. Um, well, I mean, you know, it... It, there was there was a class that I took on rhetoric when I was in college, and you know we were talking about at that time uh, Bush I think was just I think Bush was in office at that time, and no I'm sorry I think uh, Obama had just been elected, oh. um, and we were just having we were having a conversation about why how was Bush so successful as a president. And we were talking about persuasive talking and persuasive. And then I was I was listening to, in 2015 and 2016, I was listening to Trump talk. And I'm like, he is incredibly persuasive with a specific demographic. And that demographic is. Yes. And that is exactly right. It is. He was, he was likely chosen to do what he did, which was. Do nothing but cause chaos. Yeah, and you know, let and the people were into it. People wanted. Oh, they fully went for it. My, I mean, 
think about how relatable he is if you don't necessarily understand, if you're not someone who generally asks deeper questions. Think about how relatable what he says is. There is no doubt that there are so many people in America, middle class, poor, even wealthy people who've seen their lives degrade over the last 25 years. Yeah. And it's not because of liberal policies. It's because we keep giving money to the rich. But they are able to say, look what's wrong. Look at what's going wrong. Look at, what, look at what's bad. And look who's currently in office. Yeah. It's all their fault. Vote for me and I'll fix it all. And they don't ever actually follow through on it. Um, but it's a really strong tonic. And that kind of snake oil has been around since the beginning. Since the beginning of time. Uh, since the beginning of time. We, the, the, the forbidden fruit was bitten. The, the snake convinced Eve to eat the apple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's a tough one because so many really smart people just fall for it over and over and over and over again. And you wonder how many of your other decisions can I trust? You know, like. But then you want to know what's funny? They can take the same things that we're saying and say it about us. And it's well, like. That, that brings me kind of back to where I started which was the propaganda and the way that social media was manipulating people yep. and creating this divide. You can take one meme and show it to two different audiences and they'll get something different from it and hate That's each other. Right. right. That is, I mean, there is a scientific reason behind that and it's, it has very heavily to do with like bias and emotions or what we call instincts. Um, but part of it, it, there's a formula and they can just pump those things out nonstop. Every time something happens, some bro somewhere comes up with a meme and posts it and it gets shared 10,000 times and people after a thousand memes, they actually believe what they see because they've heard it a thousand times, whether it's true or not. Um, and the worst thing with memes is there's no context. So you don't actually None whatsoever. <laughs> no. And they come um, from everywhere. They come from everywhere. And they're easy to repost for attention yeah, on the internet. Ability. It's all about that instant gratification, man. Yeah. So I was watching that happen while working in the same sort of genre of technology, um, that sort of behavioral modification. Mm -hmm. And it really freaked me out. Um, I went another two and a half years at PBS before I'm like, listen, I... I'm trying to change kids, the next generation of kids, but that's going to take 25 years. It's the adults that need help now. Let me find a way. It's always going to be. Let me find a way to talk to adults. And so I decided to do Anya full time. Well, that's that is a story that needs to be told. I well, I'm even if the story doesn't get told, just keep putting me in front of people. Um, keep letting me have shows in places that wouldn't normally have shows and change people's minds. Yeah. Uh, eventually, you know, I mean, that I'll, was that was how George did it. George was yeah. doing I think it's the same thing as any performer. They end up doing these uh, these bit gigs whether they're like open mic nights or what have you. And then they catch the attention of someone and then they just they go into orbit. Yeah. And well, I don't know if I want to go into orbit. I really like being out here in the country. I don't want to go on. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now that it's summertime, maybe in the winter. <laughs> Maybe in the winter you'll go into orbit. Yeah, that's, I'll, that's I'll tour cool. like Rio in the winter or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it'll happen. I think you have you have you have talent, you have tenacity, you have yeah. intelligence. You you just have this this brilliance about you that I am completely and totally taken by. Well, I thank you very, very much. I've worked really hard on it, and some of it is deliberate, but some of it <laughs> As it should be. Yeah. And so I really appreciate you saying that because it's been a lot of work and a lot of not I'm not gonna say anguish. I'm lucky enough that I I you put you put you money. put you paid your dues. Yeah, I guess. I I feel like in the drag You're paying your dues as an individual, not as a drag queen, because yeah. I Every yeah. drag queen is still paying their dues. I know I know drag queens in their 70s that are still paying their dues. Right. That fucking um, bitch is never going to get there. Jeez. No, never. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. I no, I, I agree with that. I have a lot of skills that I brought from my life before I started drag that have yes. really helped me. And, and you so have a you have a lot of those talents that you can like that you can put into your drag. And I think you're doing a marvelous job of it already. Thank you. Well, I'm and gonna I, yeah. genuinely I think you can you can go as far as you want to. And I feel like that's that's one of the beautiful things about drag is that you can take drag literally anywhere. 
Yeah, and if something changes, just modify your stick. Or modify your your stick. Go along with it. That's how as long as you're not darkening your skin tone to look like another race of person, you're doing okay. Right. I do, not- well, I do go pink sometimes and green. Well. But that's fine. That's not, is, I don't know Jen goes purple. The Grinch is a who. He's not a person, so it's okay. Oh, but that's right. That's right. You do the Grinch impersonations. Oh, the Grinch is the easiest one. It's all of the things I want to say is Anya and and I just let it all out and people eat it up. And the best part is the mask I wear glues to my upper lip. So I have to talk out of my bottom lip and I sound just like him. That's how you have to do it. You have oh, you yeah. have to. It's almost like talking like, and you have to put a growl behind it. Yeah. And you almost, you almost sound like Thurston Howell the Third if he was goggling <laughs> nails. Gulligan, bring me the coconut. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the voice. That's oh, that's so fabulous. That's absolutely fucking hysterical. The Grinch is a lot of fun. I do another character as well. His name is Dale. He is the uh, lead, I guess the lead scare guy at a haunted house in Leesburg. Okay. Um, Leesburg, or I'm sorry, uh, the haunted house I work at, Shocktober, is Mm -hmm. actually part of a school called the Ark of Loudon, which is a nonprofit school for developmentally disabled kids and their families. And Shocktober is their biggest fundraiser of the year. And so everybody volunteers. um, And it is, what a great way to create a community for a bunch of teenagers who are kind of out of sorts in some ways, you know? They don't quite fit in anywhere I mean, the else. was really, uh, it was right after Stage Crew. You had yeah. you had Stage Crew, and then it was like, well, what do you do after that? Yeah, then, and oh, then, it's, it's, over. it's over. You have a horse now. Yeah, no, it's one of my favorite things. And my character, everybody loves him, even though he's scary. Um, because I guess that's just what I play. The comedy bit gets him. Um, and I'm working on another character based on him as well. So hopefully I'll have like a whole Tracy Ullman thing going on soon enough. I love her so much. She's uh, just a magnificent human being. And she is still going strong. She is still going. God bless her. I remember when I, (laughs) I remember I used to watch her, um, special live and exposed religiously. Uh, and of course, I, I, of course, I would watch her show. Why, who, what gay child didn't know who Tracy Ullman was? I mean, The Simpsons. Come on, of course, of course. So it, it's oh, it's so fascinating the uh, the the similarities and the differences between the two of us in terms of the performative. I, I oh, I could just eat you up. <laughs> well, I taste like beef jerky these days because I live out in the country. So <laughs> bring some water. Don't. Is that is that your husband's nickname now? You're gonna call him the pressure cooker? What the what? You're gonna call him the pressure cooker? <laughs> <laughs> and now <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh <laughs> merciful heavens. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. So we've discussed we've discussed gender, we've discussed drag, we've discussed um We've discussed a whole a whole number of the whole slew of things. Where so we all we we know that you want to take on your dick to places where you feel drag, almost sort of like to Wang Fu, where you would take on you to like these small towns and like just al- almost even like Sarah Silverman's I Love You America. Yes, yes, where, yes. Where you're just where you're just taking this 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 idea. Right. And 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 not so much forcing it in front of people, but playing to playing to their baser instincts, I guess would be the, yes. the appropriate way to say it. I like that interpretation, yes. And I've, no, go ahead, please. I was gonna say I've designed Anya, she's pretty, but she's not necessarily sexy, like a little bit, but not like, oh, she's really sexy. Yes. She's funny, she's a little bit mean, but she's never rude. Like, I mean, that's almost any old Hollywood actress when you boil it when you boil it down to brass tacks. Not entirely pretty, but my God, is she is she captivating? Yeah, yeah, it's charisma that matters. Yeah. And I I'm trying to build up that charisma, um, but I think you have it exactly right. Like that is what I'm trying to do. When we started doing drag shows out in Loudoun County, Virginia, which is like you know horse country, it is the country, county in the country. Like um, we thought we weren't going to get any pickup. And 
what I think a lot of people don't really realize because the dumbest people are the loudest people is there are so many more good people, regular people who just want to be entertained. They don't have a problem with gays. They don't have a problem with drag. They, you know, they've grown up on RuPaul's Drag Race and Will and Grace. It's been there forever. Um, and they want entertainment and they're ready for it. Yes. And along the way, I also changed some minds because it's not always what people expect. No. And so you get drugged to the and show. Like, great you, time. you have enough talent to do that. You have enough talent and you have enough personality to not so much change the minds, but to offer a different perspective. Yeah, to and give them a like good that, time. I yeah. feel like that's definitely something that people need. They need a, they need a new perspective. I think I think everybody could do with a new perspective, at least somewhat. Change your perspective sure. every day, like your underwear, or once every three days, whatever. <laughs> it's COVID. I'm not going to judge. Those about to wear underwear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> change your personality as often as you wash your earbuds. I don't know. Oh, you... There you go. That's the trick. <laughs> Oh, my graciousness. This has been such a marvelous, marvelous time. I, I know. I, I can't I, wait to get no, together in person. The question, question that I wanted to ask, we were so, we were so focused on what you, where you wanted to take Anya. What do you think the future of drag is going to look like? That's a tough one because it's changed so much in the last 13 seasons now, 13 years. Yes. Um, it was very much very much about camp and humor. And there was a lot of like, like, I guess spooky as well. Like drag had really- you take, you take drag queens like Nina West, Pissy Miles. Yeah. Uh, even, even Sharon Needles. Like you see these, these high camp, these high avant-garde uh, queens. Right. And just drag has- blown up into so many different avenues you're you're now seeing more queens like like candace kane doing all of these like moves and these death drops and like club culture and the ballroom scene is meshing and melting into it just all of these all of these facets are are falling into falling into what drag is and you right. know it's just fascinating to see this it's fascinating to see it as just as what's happening it is. I think drag queens, I think right now we're seeing such a high caliber at the top of the stage, you know, like the Olympics of drag. Really, yes. these people are so talented in so many ways and they have so many abilities to put on this this person um, that I think that those and they have really been sort of making it into mainstream culture. Mm -hmm. I think that eventually drag is just going to become part of mainstream culture, just like gay people have, you know. Like the gay best friend, or you know, yeah. the, whoever. I think that I think that drag queens will just become part of the show. Um, I, I also so. think that it will be a lot like music, as in there will be you know regional. Like you work at the club for a while, and then you put together a show and you sell it. Um, yep. I and you I see who likes, and you see who 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 picks it up. I don't, and I I don't mean this any shade, but I don't necessarily think that the queens who are. Um, great dancers and great at grabbing dollars at brunch. I don't think that that kind of drag is going to be part of the mainstream culture as much as someone can't be. No, I, I definitely see, because whenever something becomes mainstream, it's always the uh, not lowest, lower, lowest common denominator. It's, it's usually just the one that everybody gravitates towards. But that and, one has that charisma, right? Yep. Yeah, and she's at the top of the list, right? Yep. She's at that top. I, I, what I mean is like, I'm getting invited to MC a barn dance this October, and in the middle of rural Fauquier County, Virginia, I've already been asked to do this, and that is a step into mainstream that the dancing queens may not have gotten because mm -hmm. they don't necessarily give the show the way that someone at a barn dance. They, they give them. show. Every, every, there is not a drag queen I know that doesn't give shows. That is true, um, yeah. But the type there, there's different types of shows. Yeah. See, you have your musical theater queens, you have your dancing queens, you have your stand-up queens, you have your, um, you have your impersonation queens. Right. There, there's levels. There's levels and there's le like an onion. Sure. 
Um, there's, there's levels and layers to each to each individual drag queen's drag. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And not only that, but the makeup skills and the oh, costume yes. skills. Everybody's makeup skills are different. Everybody's makeup skills. It's, different. it's crazy how much the people look queens are the that. other ones that we have. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think that I think that drag will just become part of the mainstream. Um, I think that it will be the most charismatic queens or kings or anything in the middle. Yeah. Um, I think those will be the ones, just like any other star, they'll be the ones who rise to the top. And it will no longer be about drag. It'll be about the character. Because, you know, I mean, like, think of some of the characters from the 60s that were a big deal. Like, um, oh, no, I can't think of his name. Uncle Arthur. No, oh, I, Uncle Milty, Milton Burl. Well, yeah, Milton Burl was one, um, but there were so many like variety queen, Carol Burnett, um, Carol Tony Burnett. Fields, like Vegas acts. The Arthur, I mean, talk about a character, right? Um, oh, believe I, me, I'm, my, my time will come when I'll be invited to places as the Arthur. It's it's on the way. I promise you, it's on the way. Oh, I have no doubt. I'm surprised you haven't been there already. I mean, I, not many people. I've been spending most of my time in conventions. Oh, I've been, my first. I've been hiding in the convention scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only 40,000 other people there to look at you. So oh, that's, yeah. that's what's great about it. I'm going to do my first convention. Uh, I think it's in two months. It's called Awesome Con in DC. Oh, I adore Awesome Con. Oh, do you? I'm awesome going Con to is a convention I have always wanted to go to, but awesome I have con. made. I have made a cognitive choice. I am not going to any conventions this year. And I, you know, I, I do. I, I stand by that decision. Yeah. Um, I respect that totally. I do. It's, it, it's, it's, not, it's not time. It's not time yet. Yeah. If you I want know. to go to drag venues, by all means, go to drag venues. If you, want to go to, if you want to go to drag brunches, make sure that you're masked up. Make sure that the queens are masked up. Make sure that everybody's practicing what the CDC is telling us. Right. But when it comes to conventions, I've been a I've been a con goer for many years, and I know just how awful and just how many germs can spread in the span of one minute. Yeah, that is a good point. I hadn't thought about it that way. So I I always I always err on the side of caution when it comes to conventions, especially because you know one of the tropes that we had years ago was if you go to a convention, you're going to get the con crud, and I don't want COVID to be part of the con crud. No. Yeah, that is the truth. Now, see, I always assumed that that's because you all went back to the hotel and had sex with each other later. Sometimes. Uh, well, I'm a married I'm woman. Not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm gonna get myself in trouble for saying that. No. Uh, I'm I'm come on. Sometimes the sex in the convention scene, there's sometimes there's an orgy. Sometimes it's just people blowing smoke up other people's asses. Well, I can promise you it's exactly the same in any other style any of community. Other community. In in any other community. They're all sleeping with each other. They're yeah. all they're all kai kai and kikiing and all that fun stuff. It's true. They're all the parents of each other's children, as far as we of know. Of course, of course. <laughs> but that's one of the reasons why I am choosing not to not to partake of the of the con scene. Just because I'm I'm erring on the side of caution and I'm I'm pacing myself. That is respectable. I hadn't thought about it that way. Um, I'll give it a little more thought. As time. It's definitely something worth thinking about. You also have to take into consideration just how much work the convention themselves are are putting out there and how much work the con runner, oh, yeah. and how much con staff and how much con security are going to be, you know, doing doing the thing. I I personally, and this is this is this is exclusively personal, um, I want them to make it. So that you need to present them with either a negative test reading or your vaccination card and say, this is me. This is who I am. I am, I am okay. I, I am negative of the disease. I have, I have the vaccine. Here's the tea. Here's what's going on. Let me in. Yeah. I, from a practical standpoint, as a, you know what, a statistical, scientific, practical standpoint, I think that that is the most reasonable solution. Yeah. Um, but Whether from, or not people follow through yeah, with it is an entirely different animal. Yeah, yeah, because you know they'll make some memes about how you're being controlled by the government. Your passport is a way to track you, or you know stuff like that. There's always going to be some meme somewhere that someone's not going to be happy with. I know. I wish memes would just disappear. They're not even that funny usually. Uh, some of them are. The evergreen thing was hysterical. Well, I mean, the I whole was living for those memes. <laughs> My favorite one was I saw, um, you know how they'll make tables now 
that are like two strips of wood and there's like resin poured in the middle and it looks like yes. a river flowing. I saw one that had the evergreen or the ever given stuck <laughs> in the, in the resin. Amazing. I thought oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> so my love, my dear, we are at that time. Oh my God. It went so fast. When we must say goodbye to everybody. But before we do that, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Facebook as Anya Dick. That's Anya with a J and everybody knows Dick. And you can find me on Instagram as the word doctor, D-O-C-T-O-R dot Anya dot Dick. Because some other Anya Dick had already took Anya Dick. Yeah, you're, you're, it doesn't even do anything. That is, that is quite the original name. You, you know that other people are going to have it. So it's Dr. <laughs> period Anya Dick. Dr. Period dot Anya period Dick. Yes. At Instagram. And nothing on Twitter. Now, Twitter is a cesspool. I avoid it at all. <laughs> it is, though. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's totally. It really is, so before we leave, are there any parting words that you have? Any Anything that you want the people to know? Like what, what, what potential like gigs you have coming up? Uh, do you do the live, the, the digital drag? Like, do you do any of that fun stuff? Well, so part of moving into this new house is that, um, actually, I'm in my new studio right now. Uh, mm -hmm. The garage has a, a little apartment over it. I've turned it into Anya Dickland. Yeah. And so it has a tiny little kitchen. Oh, Lord, you did. <laughs> it has a tiny little kitchen, and I'm going to be making cooking shows. I'm going to get back to that, uh, especially stuff that we can grow and get here on the farm. Um, we're going full on, you know, farm girl. Um, other than that, just keep an eye out. Keep an eye on my social media. I'll post whatever gigs I have. Um, I'll Excellent. probably make some silly videos throughout the summer because I get bored. So keep an eye out. I'm, I'm, I adore you. I love you so much. I would love to have you back on this show at some point. Yes, please. Um, uh, feel free to always hit me up. I'm always down to conversate. Uh, okay. You, I'll just tell you on the phone because you're fun to talk to. Oh, th thank you. You are too. Like we'll we'll exchange numbers and everything. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> but no, I I adore you. I treasure you as a human being. You are a marvelous drag queen. You are absolutely stunning. I can't. And I I cannot wait to see what you what you cultivate and come up with. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for having me. You know, I was passive aggressive when I posted that nobody's inviting me on there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but hey, here I am. It worked out great, and I'm happy to be here. So thank you. No, I'm thrilled. I I, I genuinely adore you. I I think, you know, I confidentially speaking, I try to have like rising stars on my show. Uh, so Ooh. like, let's see what totally happens. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. But as if you want to follow me, you can at that Tomcat on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, Vero, everywhere. That Tomcat. I'm, I'm all over the place. Is that Tomcat? Uh, YouTube is the only place I'm not that Tomcat. YouTube, it's www.youtube.com backslash um, Tomcat. If they search for Tomcat, would they find you? Wait, what happened, darling? They just went in and searched for Tomcat. Would they find you? They should find me that way. Okay. People should, people just always seem to find me in the, in the weirdest of places. And keep them. Um, <laughs> but I adore you, Anya. Thank you again for being on my show. Thank you guys for watching. Please, again, share, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, and I'll see you guys next week in another episode of Cat Chat. Shout me out for now, guys. Bye. Bye.